actor testing more than 100 digital health gadgets, sensors, and technologies, and sharing all of this with you, I thought I would provide you with the current landscape of the wearable and digital health market. So if you are looking for a device, a technology to improve your lifestyle or health management, this is the video you have been looking for. Here is the current landscape of the digital health wearable revolution. Headbands. Headbands can be used for multiple purposes. It can be a headband that measures EEG, electroencephalogram, so maybe it can help detect seizures in epilepsy, or you can use it to detect EEG, so maybe you meditate better, like this one. Or you can use headbands for sleep quality measurements, which are far from being comfortable, but at least they can provide more detailed data about the sleep session. Smart earrings. I haven't tested any yet because I haven't seen any on the market being available, but there have been reports about developing earring-based sensors that can measure body temperature, so maybe they can be used during fertility management. A patch on the upper arm. The best example for that is a wireless blood glucose sensor. I've used one for two weeks. I put it on and it measured my blood glucose continuously for two long weeks. I've learned so much about how to adjust my diet based on these readings and just in general, how to understand better how my body works and how I deal with glucose management. Smart tattoos. It's very similar to these patches, but smart tattoos are thin electronics, flexible sensors that can be put on anywhere on the body and they can measure basic vital signs and health parameters. There are not many smart tattoos on the market. There have been some from the company called MC10 that was reported to be used in clinical trials, but we are yet to see smart tattoos being widely available. A smart patch on a chest. Because of its placement, these ones can be used for a very specific purpose, measuring blood pressure. I used this for two weeks. I had to make a reference measurement with a cough-based blood pressure device, but then for two weeks, it continuously measured my blood pressure. This would be excellent in helping hundreds of millions of people with high blood pressure better manage their disease. Smart clothes. The idea is very simple. You put sensors into the fabric of these smart clothes. It's nothing new. Millions of football players around the world have been using these or you know, fabrics like this one to measure basic vital signs and fitness activities during training sessions. Plus, even astronauts can use that uh, on the International Space Station. Smart socks. Smart socks can measure basic vital signs for newborns and for adults. These play a very important role in diabetes management because in diabetes, Sometimes food complications take place, ulcers can arise, and these smart socks have sensors embedded into the fabric so it can measure temperature. If an inflammation starts developing, the smart socks will send a notification to a smartphone. Smart shoe soles. These are used for fitness tracking, but they are not widely available yet. On the upper arm, you can use portable diagnostic devices like this one. It's, of course, a blood pressure cuff. It measures blood pressure. At the same time, it can do a heart rate measurement plus an ECG. And at the end, with this sensor here, it can listen to cardiac and lung sounds. Portable combined diagnostic device. Of course, far the most important variable on the market is the category of smart watches. There are more than 220 million people just in the US wearing a sort of a smartwatch. These can measure vital signs, health parameters, some of them even ECGs, and of course the future iterations might be able to measure blood glucose and blood pressure at once in one package. Smart bracelets. Very similar to smartwatches, but there is no interface or screen. And these bracelets have a very specific purpose. Like this one was designed to measure blood pressure continuously. After reference management, it will be able to measure blood pressure for weeks and maybe once a month you have to charge it. Great example for blood pressure management. Smart rings. Rings can measure vital signs, health parameters, body temperature, you know, basic stuff like those that smartwatches and bracelets can do. But these are rings. Therefore, if someone doesn't want to wear a big smartwatch on their wrist, they can just get the same data by wearing a simple ring. Smart necklaces. About 10 years ago, there was an idea that wearing a jewelry as a health sensor made sense, but there was not really a market for that. So now smart necklaces are mainly used by the elderly population for fall detection, which is very important in emergency care services. Smart glasses represent a huge category. Augmented and mixed reality glasses that can measure some basic vital signs can belong to this category, just like the Google Glass, plus devices like this one, with which by putting the smartphone on the front, we can do an eye vision test and it can also test patients for color blindness. Sensors on the belt. 
There was a big market for sensors on the belt for measuring fitness activities and stress levels. But it turned out it was not so easy to provide accurate measurements while the sensor was on a belt and not closer to the skin. Oxygen saturation devices. Hospitals had been using these for decades. They measure oxygen saturation, the blood oxygen levels of patients. But these devices are digital health technologies, meaning they also provide data for patients, not just for medical professionals. Smart inhalers is also a big category, mainly for devices that contribute to asthma management. Smart inhalers can measure peak flow, a very important data point for patients dealing with asthma. And devices like this can measure the number of puffs a patient takes a day, this way contributing to their even drug management. Uh, in asthma. And last but not least, ear sensors or otoscopes. These otoscopes can provide video recording or photos of the inner ear. And some of the newer situations can also measure like basic body temperature and vital signs. But the most important feature of these devices is to make remote care otolaryngology consultations accessible. So this is the current landscape. You will find links to all of these and the reviews and articles and videos we have published about these technologies in the description of this video. If I miss something, a new area of variables, please let me know. And of course, like usual, I will keep on updating you about all the exciting things happening in the variable digital health market. Cheers. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get all the videos about the future of medicine, healthcare and advanced technologies. Also, please check out medicalfuturist.thinkific.com to access our courses on digital health and AI's role in the future of healthcare. See you there.